Williams, and in this video, I wanted to talk about the last night's episode that aired, uh, was which was um, season six, episode eleven of the TV show on the CW TV network, um, DC Legends of Tomorrow, or Legends of Tomorrow, which is obviously one of, has been one of their main staple. Um, Obviously, superhero shows on there, obviously, for the past five, six years, along with The Flash, The Green Arrow, it's part of the Arrowverse, along with, um, uh, also, uh, the, um, Supergirl, also, and Black Lightning, but, but all those shows are gone, except, obviously, this one, in The, in the Flash, um, and Superman Lois has been the newest show, and Stargirl as well, and Batwoman are the newer shows on there that have been around for a couple of years now, first season, obviously, of, um, Superman Lois is almost coming to an end, and look, judging by um, this, and obviously The Flash, it's looking like next season, The Flash, and also The Legends of Tomorrow are going to end. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the announcement at, that they had at their Comic-Con panel online, virtually, where the CW um, producers for the show and the director of the show gave away the plot for Season 7 before this season was over, letting us know exactly what's going to happen, along with John Constantine, played by Matt Ryan, who's no longer going to be on the show anymore. Uh, he's going to be playing a different character, and he's going to be playing a, a British science, scientist who knows all about time travel from the 1800s. So it's it's basically him. his character changing is basically the the key to, obviously, the, the plot next season, which makes, obviously, all the sense. And... Um, the reason why they're changing it is just so weird, but uh, obviously, um, we know that they couldn't announce it, but I already said this, uh, HBO Max is making a Constantine, John Constantine show that will be out next year, and it's going to be made by um, Bad Robot, and unfortunately, because of that, they can't do the show anymore, uh, they can't have Matt Ryan play John Constantine on the show anymore, because it's being pr produced by um, Bad Robot, so because of that, he can't play him, so they mentioned that but they did not obviously um, give away the um, the full truth of that. And I, I explained to that that I thought that that was really weird. And um, Bad Robot, who, who again is uh, the company that is uh, run and create was created by the director J.J. Abrams. He's making a dark, gritty John Constantine show that will be out next year. So because of that, the HBO Max uh, right HBO Max is getting the rights to John Constantine, so he won't be appearing on any other show. As Matt Ryan won't be appearing, uh, probably on any other show. He was on Lucifer apparently for a couple of episodes, and they had a crossover type of event where a couple of, I think it was last season the guy who played Lucifer was on the show, and him and John kind of Constantine kind of interacted with obviously the, each other. I think he was on his show a couple episodes. I don't watch that show, so I don't know. Um, so that's what's been happening. So yeah, and um, like I said, the reason why I'm saying this is because um, seated the CW TV network, um, the producers and the directors of the show, if they, they actually cared about um, the show's mystery remaining, uh, uh, that which is obviously a mystery, they would never gave away the plot for season seven before season six was already over while also letting us know that John Constantine wasn't going to be on the show anymore. So it's kind of like they don't, it's basically looking like they don't care about the show. So basically, um, I'll get into the, the episode, but before I wanted to do that, I want to continue to talk about this, obviously, because I'm seeing that basically what's been happening is is that the CW is obviously sticking to a couple of only superhero shows now, but um, obviously, as far as spinoffs go, they're not doing that. Like I've said before, any ones that they've had in line to be produced have been canceled. The Green Arrow and the Canaries show was canceled, which is obviously was supposed to be the spinoff of the Green Arrow which was supposed to see Oliver Queen and a Felicity Smoke's um, kids, his son William and his son Mia Smoke, who he had, obviously, with Felicity. He had his son William with another woman, um, obviously, years ago before that. So, obviously, they're half-brother and sister. Um, but um, same dad, but different mother. Um, basically, uh, but he was introduced, obviously, to Felicity, so he knew her. So, basically, um, that's what, they canceled that. They had hyped it up. They had the backdoor pilot episode. They had multiple episodes of them, um, teaming up with their dad, and then all of a sudden, and then six months later, after the show was over, the Green Arrow ended, we were supposed to see that show, and they finally gave us the answer, which was no. There was, like, six months of waiting, a lot of people, like myself, were like, what's going on? There hasn't been any, uh, official announcement. Yeah, and what's the holdup? And they just said no six months later. Just like it was like, wow, we couldn't just you could. Uh, I don't know what's what's happening. You could have just said something sooner. I was just like, what's the holdup for announcing that you weren't going to green light the show? I don't get that. The same thing happened with Black Lightning after um, he was his show was supposed to be over and his family obviously on the show with his 
kids who are superheroes, obviously, his two daughters. Um, he was supposed to have, uh, there was supposed to be a spinoff show with a, a painkiller uh, character on there. It was played by an actor, Jordan Calloway, who played the, uh, who played the, um, the um, character Khalil Payne, who is obviously painkiller. He went from villain to obviously the good guy after he had a change of heart and obviously knew he was getting played by the ASA and also um, Tobias Well, who was the reason why he was paralyzed in the first place because he got shot in the back because of him trying to shoot um, the reverend uh, that they had on the show by Clifton Powell, the actor, and it ended up hit him getting hit instead and obviously that's what left him paralyzed his show was supposed to be happening after black lightning show was over but unfortunately they let us know the actual week of the last episode of black lightnings for a final season which was season four episode 13 that he that show was not going to be green lit it was announced that it was a uh, um jordan calloway actually put it out on his instagram that, that they were moving forward that whole entire debacle so uh, happened with the show as well where they had um uh I forgot her name. She played Black Lightning's younger daughter. Um, he she played his um, younger daughter on the show. Um, the actor I forgot her name. She played um, his daughter um, on the show. Yeah, his younger daughter on the show. I forgot it was Anessa and Jennifer Pierce. Um, Jennifer Pierce. Yeah, he, he, um, his younger daughter, the actress that played her, left the show for about six episode, five episodes, halfway through the season, and she came back. Because she was, she see, she mentioned that she was being walked away from acting, so it was supposed to be her last season. So because of that, the her episodes were cut short. They brought her back on the last episode, had somebody else play her, and made her think that she was gone forever. And then she came back on the last episode. Uh, I thought that was really weird, but that's been happening with the CW. Like I said, they're moving in a different direction. The live action version of the Powerpuff Girls is going to be on there with Chloe Bennett, who used to play Sky, aka. Um, um, what was her name? Sky, aka Daisy, aka Quake, aka Earthquake, um, on um, um, Agents of Shield. She's gonna be on the on the show as with other two other girls. There's supposed to be this TV show called Naomi with this girl. She's like 16, 17. She's a black girl who plays uh, who gets superpowers because Superman comes to her town, and because of that, that leads to some freak accident with her getting powers that out of nowhere. I don't know how that happens. If she's Kryptonian or not, I don't really don't know. Uh, there's supposed to be some other show on there called Kung Fu or something. I don't know what's going on, but that's what they're that's what they're doing. That's the direction that they're moving in. And the other shows that they have on there, such as obviously Batwoman and obviously Star Girl and, and Superman and Lois, those are the only superhero shows that they have. Um, I can't think of anything else that, um, that, that, that that's new that's going to stay around obviously for a couple more years because next this uh, this time next year, um, right now. The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow will be gone. They're being their, they're going to be in their last seasons up, uh, coming up, obviously very soon. They're not going to obviously be around after next year. Um, after the, after this year, um, so yeah, I can see them ending obviously in February, looking like 2022 March. Um, that's what it looks like, especially when the CWTV producers of the show and the director of Legends of Tomorrow announced the whole entire plot for season seven with the whole entire team of the legends losing the wave rider and they can't time travel really at all anymore because they lost in their powers uh the power to do that and obviously they still have their own abilities and whatnot but um actually excuse me nobody uh besides um obviously uh nate he, no one else really um has superpowers unless well, John Constantine has his magic, but he won't be around anymore. Everybody else is obviously not has no superpowers. They have skills, and obviously, um, Bayrod and obviously his sister um, have the, the. Well, there is obviously um, Spooner. She has her psychic abilities and whatnot, but that kind of comes and goes. If she has headaches because of her interaction with aliens, the show has been like all over the place, and it's been a, been a mess. Obviously, um, last night's episode was basically them obviously. Um, getting trapped in some bowling alley in space that was moving around and there was nothing around them just floating they couldn't leave the place um half the team went to go this is basically them spooner um azra right here and as you can see sarah lance and mcrory half the, most of the team but well half the team they went to go find some pod alien pod and it led them to some a junkyard abandoned and they were searching around for it look they couldn't find it, it was like this open casket type of thing they went in there looked into it couldn't find it. It was a big, huge cube, like Rube's cube, like looked like something from the future, like how it was. 
They kept touching it and playing with it, and obviously they knew what was going to happen. And the next thing you know, they all get zapped into this bowling alley, and they have these clothes on. They're like, we have bowling alley clothes on, uh, shirts, team shirts. What are we doing here? So apparently the that whole thing was an invitation, and the guys called the pin killers. They're the ones who uh, were, are the who run the bowling alley because every time they beat somebody, they get to keep those people's souls, and obviously they destroy their planet. And the bowling alley, the, bowl, the bowling balls that they actually use are that they keep for their trophies represent the people and the planets that they've obviously conquered and destroyed. So they were playing against aliens who were look like, look like humans, obviously at a bowling alley. While the rest of the team, John Constantine, Bayrod, and obviously um, Ava Sharp, and obviously um, uh, Bayrod, a Ava Sharp, and uh, Gary were on the ship. Um, doing separate stuff while um, Zari and um, Nate went to go hang out and take a hike. They went hiking because they wanted to spend time together. So they went hiking. The rest of the team was on the ship, so they were all split into basically teams and, and different uh, factions and whatnot. So basically what happened was is um, the rule of the game is this. If your team loses in the bowling alley, you guys have your you guys die. And your whole planet dies. So that was basically what happened. It was really weird and random. That's basically what happened. Um, so they had to, uh, the, the they were all arguing. Azra didn't want to play until the end. Um, Spooner and Mick kept arguing, and Sarah was like, "How do we get out of here?" And while that's happening, um, they showed um, obviously John Constantine dealing with his new uh, magic powers that are darker that he has now because he's drinking, obviously. Some type of a uh, um, vial of it looks like some type of blood, or that gives him extra powers of magic that he got from Alistair Crawley's obviously a uh, vampire connection. This lady gave him a bunch of uh, jars of it, and he's been getting extra powers. And he was able to transport the whole entire Wave Rider using a spell out of space into uh, I think the Earth's atmosphere. So they were able to get to the team, but they were not able to get inside because of the rules. You can't leave until you win the game. Or if you lose the game, you never leave. Your planet dies, and you die as well. They, the pen killers, who are these bowlers, they killed uh, this other team, and their spirit, they va vaporized right in front of the whole team. They were watching it, these other guys, and they were gone. And so that's basically what happened. So that's basically what it was. It was just like a, it was a, basically like a random episode. Basically, they went there, and got zapped into the bowling alley, and it had nothing to do with anything that they were trying to do. Basically, so this is which you can classify as a filler episode. They already gave it away that towards the end of the season, which is probably be, probably be the second to last episode. Um, Bishop, the bad guy who acts like a Disney villain who sings all the time and dances, he's he's obviously very cringeworthy. And it's really silly because I'm like, you're supposed to be a bad guy on the show, and all you're doing is dancing and singing and say I'm gonna destroy destroy you, and he's singing and dancing. And, He's laughing at Sarah Lance, and he's saying, you know, let's sit down, eat with me, have a drink. Just looking at how the show is compared to what it was years ago when they had somebody like Vandal Savage, a real bad guy, very evil, brutal, never laughed, never smiled, never did anything like that. He was a real bad guy and a villain. Damien Dark, also who was a villain on the show, was a bad guy and a villain. They were great. The this bishop guy is terrible. Um, I don't like him. He's like he, he's. The show is basically more comedic now than it's ever been. Years ago, it was not like that. They turned it into like their version of Guardians of the Galaxy. Basically, this show is basically DC's version of Guardians of the Galaxy with the Legends. It was not like that years ago. They weren't doing musical song and dances every now and then. Um, all the time randomly um doing we having weed jokes and stoner jokes on the show and bayrod just smokes weed all the time and i'm just like wow this show it was never like this years ago when uh rip hunter got all everybody together and recruited all of them it wasn't like this years ago and they had the professor obviously on there who was obviously half of a uh um that's i think starfire a starfire a starfire um he was half of obviously um the, i forgot that it was um Firestorm, yeah. Him and obviously the younger guy who was black. When they, him and Professor, 
when they fused together as one person, they became Firestorm. Um, it was like that back in the day. They had, they had um, obviously some comedic parts here and there, but the show was turned into a whole like a like a Disney Channel uh, basically thing. They've got animated cartoon versions of episodes on the show where they jump into storybooks and they turn into animated characters and Azra turned into like a Disney princess and she was animated and singing and everybody on the team turned into, it was like um, uh, Beauty and the Beast, everybody on the team turned into forks and candles and spoons and stuff. It was like Beauty and the Beast basically, so that's what's been happening on the show for the past like four or five years now. Like literally, the first two seasons, it was more dark and gritty. Uh, Hawk, Hawkman and Hawk Girl were on the show. Uh, they had Damien Dark on here uh, in season three and four, three and four. It was way he was obviously much more evil and dark, um, more brutal. And I think they didn't have the. Did he? I think he teamed up Reverse Flash on here, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, no, no. He he teamed up with him. Um, I think he did team up with him on Le, the Le, Le, when they had a little Legion of Doom. Him and Hunter Zoom, Reverse Flash, and um, yeah. Uh, and on Zoom, it was Reverse Flash, Damien Dark. Um, I forgot who else was with them, but um, yeah, it wasn't Vandal Savage, but uh, Nora Dark, obviously his daughter. But yeah, it's that, that that's what the, how the show has been for the past obviously four five years now. Like I said, if you go back to that first season when you see da uh, Vandal Savage, it was just way more darker and obviously more gritty. And he was just like the ultimate bad guy, just evil, brutal. He didn't care who he hurt and who he took down. And obviously the thing though sucked for Hawkman and Hawk Girl. They always got killed by Vandal Savage, and he always were trying to get the revenge. That was a great thing to incorporate, incorporate, incorporate. Um, incorporate into the story because they were fighting him for like centuries and now they're working with the team to take him down so that added to obviously the whole entire ordeal and Rip Hunter was trying to get revenge on Vandal Savage for killing his wife and his son so that was a big thing so it was much more uh, gritty back in the day obviously Rip Hunter is no longer the um, obviously person in charge he's been gone for years he's not the person in, uh, obviously in charge anymore uh, the only thing that remains of him is Gideon and the Wave Rider itself. That was that's basically it, um, and that's basically how things have been for the past couple of years. So, um, yeah, the show is still okay, but I'm just saying basically what's been happening obviously over the past couple of years has basically sh seen this show become D the D uh, DC's version of obviously Guardians of the Galaxy, where they're cracking jokes obviously all the time, drinking yelling um so obviously like i said weed weed smoke is on the show um uh bay rod's a stoner so he smokes weed all the time and it's, it's just you know supposed to be like that like it's 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 a bunch of uh comedic parts rolled into one with them being like superheroes and um even last night when i saw sarah like uh making the toast of the joke saying are we legends or not and uh when they were drinking the beer i was just like that was just like cringeworthy and super like weird, but that's just how the show is now. Um, you know, it's gonna be over next season, and we'll see what happens when it ends. Um, but obviously, as you can see, with the show's ratings dipping down here and there this past season, with a lot of fans down like in the first six episodes of this season, I think possibly seven around there, where basically the first half of the season they're trying to find Sarah Lance lost in space, and um, that was basically it. Besides that, now they had this little alien Furby baby that they they had in their possession. They had to get they got rid of it finally a couple episodes ago. I was happy for that because I thought I was glad to see that because I thought that was really weird that they how they had that. that the whole thing was weird in general. Um, and that's basically what's gonna happen. The McRory situation is silly. He's no longer gonna be on the show because obviously the actor playing him, Dominique Purcell, right here, who plays Heat Wave slash McRory who obviously used to be on Prison Break. Uh, the guy who played Michael Schofield, his brother on Prison Break, Prison Break was also on the show as Captain Cold, his partner. He's no longer on the show. It was uh, He left years ago. Um, but oh, It's been almost two years now. So um, basically what's going to happen is he's like pregnant with aliens in the back of his neck, like right here. So he's going to be off the show. I don't know how they're going to incorporate that with him leaving, obviously. Is it going to be him dying with, with aliens? It's all weird. It's like, oh, well, he's no longer going to be on the show, so we're not going to write him out as him going to be with his daughter, finally, and his, obviously, uh, her mother. She's pregnant, obviously, his daughter. As you can see, she was on a couple episodes ago. It's going to be 
um, I guess he's gonna die because he has aliens in the back of his neck that he's pregnant with. It's it's just weird. It's it's obviously very silly. I'm like, you guys couldn't write anything better. Like he finally says, you know what? It's time for me to move on and be with my family. I hope that he actually says that at the end, not the he's gonna give birth to these alien babies in the back of his neck and he dies. Something really really weird and random. But like that's just how the show has been. Uh, like I said, for the past couple of years, it's been up and down. But I would have to say that um. It's running on fumes, obviously, and uh, it's looking like this is going to be the last season, uh, season seven, up, up and coming, which they already gave the plot out for, which is the whole entire team is no longer going to be able to time travel because the Legends lose the Wave Rider, which is their ability to time travel. It's their spaceship that time, they, they use to travel through time. They're not going to have that, and um, uh, I don't know what they're going to do, but we'll see what happens, obviously, and John Constantine will no longer be on the show. He's not going to have his own separate show, obviously, anymore, because, obviously, HBO Max has now have taken the rights away from the CW and them using it, obviously, to the character at all. Matt Ryan won't be on the show playing him. He's playing another character now. That's so weird. <laughs> John Constantine's going to be gone. Then He's going to magically appear. Matt Ryan's going to magically appear as another character, a scientist from the 1800s. Who knows all about time travel? It's very weird, but that's what the, they said it's going to happen on the next season. And we they gave that away a couple weeks ago before this season's already over. So it's like they don't really care about the show. They're like, let's just get this out the way and move on. We really don't care about it anymore. It's not important. We're focusing on the new shows that we're going to have, obviously, up and coming on the show. And anything of any other shows remaining, like I said, um, with spinoffs, they're not doing. There is no Green Arrow and Canaries. Black, there won't be any Painkiller show. Um, they're not going to do any more spinoffs. So... Anything that ends, obviously, will just be ending by itself as far as the superhero shows go. Go, There won't be any more spinoffs, obviously. Uh, well, there won't be any at all, excuse me. That's what's obviously going to happen on the CW TV, TV network. Um, it's been it's been great. It's, it's, it's obviously had a very good run with the Arrowverse. Um, a couple more years, and then it's going to be it. Um, I'd say probably... Um, I'd say probably 2023 probably looks like that'll be probably the it the end for it with um all the current shows as far as um i would say the superhero shows with star girl batwoman and obviously um star superman and lois i can see them pushing each show for another two seasons and that'll probably probably be it i don't know if all the shows will be on the air in 2024 i say 23 24 it's possible but i don't know we'll see but judging how things are with this this whole entire um, network i don't know they could have them on there but who knows how the, what will happen obviously because they're very fickle they keep changing and like i said the new shows that they're going to have i don't know if they're going to be successful like i said a live action version of the powder buff girls we'll see i don't know people who used to watch the show when it was obviously in the late 90s early 2000s as the animated cartoon if they'll be interested in watching that like I said, also with this whole Naomi show, who I don't know nothing about her. Like I said, a lot of these characters are not household superheroes, so lots of people don't know who they are. So they're not going to be very interested in watching a brand new show about some random people that they don't know about, obviously. Girl, these people just get powers out of nowhere. Then it's just like, we're supposed to just watch and, and take up, take up obviously, these characters. And now they're doing crossovers to introduce the new characters with the old ones. So you'll become familiar with them. And... Hopefully you like it. Next se uh, next season, when all these shows have their next seasons, obviously there's supposed to be a bunch of team-ups happening on different episodes with Superman and teaming up with the Legends of Tomorrow or him possibly teaming up with the Flash or the Stargirl uh, teaming up with Batwoman and her people and all that. There's supposed to be di many different crossovers on each of these shows upcoming this fall in 2021 with each show. They said they already filmed some episodes or whatever. I don't know how that's going to work and it's going to happen. I would like to see Superman and the Flash team up. That would be very nice. Hopefully we get to see that, obviously. Um, or hopefully the um, the Legends of Tomorrow team up, obviously, with uh, Superman and his family somehow. So hopefully that happens. I don't watch the other show, so I really don't care at all for them. Um, I saw Stargirl. It's like a, her and like her teenage friends and kids kind of teaming up like the Teen Titans kind of like. It's something like that. I'm not interested in that, but the, the Titans show, I'm, I'm more interested in that because that's more gritty and obviously more, uh, uh, I would say TVMA, obviously more about 18 to 24, th that range of the darker and obviously more grittier content, obviously, as far as her, that goes with that. So I'll watch that instead, obviously. And their season three is about to come out soon on HBO Max. 
versus obviously watching that her her show with her cute little friends. Obviously, I saw them. They look obviously really cheesy and corny in their costumes and look like cosplay to me. So I don't want to watch that. So that's basically all I have to say about the, my review of this episode um, of Legends of Tomorrow, the show, and obviously what's been happening. The episode was okay. Um, last week's episode, I'm trying to remember what happened. Actually, it was a couple weeks ago. They haven't had an episode in a couple weeks. I think the last one was actually a, li a little bit more better. This one was okay. It was just kind of random. Like I said, they get zapped into a bowling alley by just, they don't, you know, by touching this, al this obviously cube object like there was alien technology. And they shouldn't have touched it in the first place. But um, uh, then they had to leave. If the team, they didn't leave, they, so what happened is obviously they won the game. What happens was the painkillers were using this bowling ball, and it was actually the earth. And they were rolling the ball on the ground and hitting the bowling alley, uh, the bowling lane, and the pins. And everything, every time they did that, pieces of the earth were getting cracked and, and split in half. So while Nate and Zuri, Zari were hiking, the whole ground just disappeared uh, by their feet. So they were like walking around, things were disappearing because the painkillers were using, obviously, their bowling ball was actually earth. I don't know how they were able to do that. They're, they're in space or around the earth's axis, but they're using a bowling ball that represents the earth. And every time they throw it, pieces of the planet, obviously on the foundation of the ground and stuff crack and disappear. I thought that was really weird. Like that made no sense to me, but, um, that's what happened. And every time they beat a team or a people, their planet gets destroyed and they die. They're like Galactus or Thanos. And they're like, the guy said they're gods. And he said, the, the painkillers leader said, I'm not a God. I'm just a guy that loves playing bowling. It was just a weird episode. Like I said, but that it was just random. Like I said, we'll see what happens next week um, on the show. Uh, they had a break for a couple weeks along with the, the Superman and Lois. They keep doing these consistent breaks for a couple weeks, and it's been, been getting really annoying. I'm just like, you guys just keep dragging this out. Like, the season's almost over. Just drop the episodes one, one, one every other week. There's no reason to do that anymore, especially because they're already produced, and you got them on the back end, you know, on the back burner. So you're not these are have already been filmed. So what's the point of keep doing these? You know, keep you know, you know what is the, the hiatus that so they keep doing these hiatuses? Two weeks, then we show one episode. Then two weeks later, we show a couple more. And then we, episodes, then we go on another hiatus. I'm just like, just keep just put them out one by week, one per week, obviously. And then when you do the mid season finale, you go on a break for a couple weeks, and then you come back, obviously, to finish out the rest of the season. But they keep doing that. Obviously, there's really no reason for that. But we'll see what happens. Obviously. They were trying to do that, obviously, with um, uh, Supergirl, with Superman and Lois, where she was going to be on, taking their time slot currently while they were on their little hiatus. Trying to, They were trying to use the show, the viewers from Superman and Lois, to come to Supergirl to, so they can get some viewers to people for people to watch them. That show, obviously, even though it's in the last season, I really don't know why they did that. It seems really weird, because obviously Supergirl is about to end in a couple more weeks. So I don't know why they, why they did that, but... That's what they did. I don't know. So we'll see what happens, obviously. This show's ratings have obviously been going down the drain for the past couple of years. You can obviously see it now. Even articles I showed a couple weeks ago stating, is this show going to be canceled? What's going on? The ratings have been dipping down. Lots of people have obviously lost interest in this show. Like I said, it's been around for a while. It's obviously running on fumes, and it's looking like it will be over next year with the seventh and final season, judging by how they've mapped it out. And obviously what the team's done so far, they've done everything through time, the future, the past, and the present, how they've been uh, time traveling, fighting aliens, all types of monsters and stuff. So we'll see what happens with that. Like I said, they've already, and now they're going to lose the ability to time travel completely when they lose their wave rider next season. Like I said, the CW TV producers and directors of the show already gave away the, the whole entire plot for next season in their Comic-Con um, virtual um discussion with the whole cast why would you give that all away before this season's almost over unless you didn't care about it because remember what usually what happens is when a show is going to end the producers and people on the show on the network put out information about the next season a couple weeks after the show's current season's over or the week of to get people excited as teasers they dropped this weeks before the show was even over they dropped this two weeks ago so why would they do that because they're like we just don't care let's get rid of the show we're gonna get the show is gonna be gone soon let's get this out there we don't care Get it out the way. Let's get rid of it because we're moving on, obviously, to the newer shows. They don't care about this, obviously. They're older shows. That's why I said they're like, oh, The Flash is gonna not going to have Grant Gust on the show anymore, but Bart Allen could take his place. I'm like, well, 
you guys are not looking like you're going to keep any shows around unless the original people are on. So why would you do a spinoff? So it's going to be The Flash, but it's going to be an Impulse instead. That makes no sense because they were supposed to do the same thing, like I said, with Green Arrow and the Canaries and obviously Black Lightning's spinoff show, The pa Painkiller. They're supposed to have those shows on right now and they're supposed to be getting green lit. And they decided to cancel them and not do them at all. They said, no, we're not doing it. After they hyped it up, did all these episodes, the actors wasted their time. They obviously wasted money because they produced the, these all these fit, these shows with special effects and stuff. Multiple different episodes and backdoor pilot episodes with crossovers. Now you're just going to say, oh, we're not doing this anymore. So that's what's been happening on the show. The, these shows, the whole entire network itself on the CWTV network, it's very confusing and annoying that they keep doing this. I have no idea why, but... It's really weird, like, they can't make up their mind about what they want to do. So, like, we're going to do the spinoff, we're not going to do the spinoff. So, so it's like, which one is it? John Constantine's going to be on the show, but he's not having uh, the Legends of Tomorrow as a, as a recurring cast member. But he will not have his own show separately on our network at all. That was announced years ago. They said they're not doing it. Now, years later, he's gone. He's not going to be on the show anymore. Matt Ryan's not going to play John Constantine anymore on this show. Don't know if he's going to play in the future somewhere again. Hopefully, if he gets his own second season on another episode show, Network, or possibly um, Netflix, I don't know, but um, he's playing, obviously, now different characters, so that's what's going to happen. It's just really weird. whole entire show and how the Network's been moving in the past couple years has been very weird, but that's all I have to say about this episode of Legends of Tomorrow, and obviously the rest of the news for the whole entire Network, obviously, and they're all their shows, past and present, their superhero shows, obviously. And that's what's been going on basically and that thank you for watching that's my um, review for it it was okay it was average i think the the previous episode which was season 10 uh, six episode episode 10 a couple weeks ago was a little bit more better like i said this was a random episode half the team just grabs this cube that they don't even know what it is, it is and just gets zapped into a bowling alley in outer space where they can't leave literally they're, they're flown in outer space in a bowling on a bowling alley and they can't leave until they win the game against the guys who run who, who are running you know, I've taken over the bowling alley. That's what's basically what basically happened on this episode a couple of days ago on Monday, on Sunday. So that's basically it again. Uh, thank you for watching. That's the end of my video, and let me know what you have to think about this. Obviously, if you've been watching the show, you stopped watching a couple of years ago because you're tired of it. Well, you were tired of it, and obviously, if you're burnt out by a lot of these superhero shows, and a lot of people have been saying that they are in the movies. That's how Hollywood is right now. Five years from now, a lot of these superhero movies will no longer be on, and Hollywood's going to be in big trouble because these, a lot of these shows and movies that they're putting out, they're reboots. People are getting tired of them. They're losing money, lots of money, and you see all these lawsuits that are happening now, these actors suing them. Uh, Disney against you know, the Black Widow situation with Scarlett Johansson suing Disney, and now um, a lot of actors are suing these uh, these networks. These, um, companies and stuff so it's it's looking very weird so i don't know what's gonna happen there now they're doing a whole six episode um D you know disney plus marvel type of shows and let's see what happens with them in the future but it's not looking it's looking not really good right now for the, for a lot of these networks these um studios and networks obviously but they'll continue to use these um obviously superhero shows until there's nothing left so in a couple of years from now about five we won't see any of them anymore, so that's the, that'll be the cutoff date. We'll have these sequels, obviously, with, and then, you know, after that, they won't have anything, basically. So they could put them on TV shows on Netflix and obviously Disney+, Plus, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. It's a big gamble, and like I said, lots of them waste lots of money on these movies that aren't going to do very well. You can clearly see it, obviously, but we'll see what happens, like I said. And that's basically it, and that's the end of my video. Uh, thank you again for watching. That's all I have to say about this again. And thank you uh, for watching any of my obviously past videos that I talked about, The Legends of Tomorrow, obviously. And uh, thank you again. Bye. Thank you.